Factoring is a really important skill um, in um, this class. Uh, if you move further into mathematics, if you take calculus, it is a skill that's really important. Um, so um, I just want to take uh, some time this week to really focus on factoring. So um, this factoring review worksheet hopefully will help remind you about some of the factoring stuff. Okay. Now, the first thing you want to check anytime you have to factor, is there a greatest common factor? So, is there a factor that you can remove? Is, it a, is there a number that divides into every term that you can divide out? Is there a letter, a, a variable that they have in common that you can take out? That's what they mean by a greatest common factor. So, anytime you're asked a factor, that's the first thing you should check for. Now, you should go for how many terms is, are left in the parentheses or in the thing that I'm supposed to factor. If there are two terms, that is a binomial, there are some uh, um, pieces that factor more efficiently than others. And here are the formulas. Here are the perfect square formulas. Um, and if you have, uh, where is it? No, I'm sorry. Difference of squares formula is what I want. This one right here. The difference of two squares factors to be um, a minus b times a plus b. That is a formula that you should know. There are two other formulas I'm going to give for you right here. If you have a cubed uh, plus b cubed, it does factor to be a minus b, a squared plus a b plus b squared. And you can also factor a cubed minus b cubed, which is a, wait a second, I got these signs switched around, I'm sorry. The top one, this is a plus and this is a minus. The bottom one <laughs> goes this is a minus and this is a plus. Okay, so those three formulas that you see here, the uh, a squared minus b squared, a plus cubed plus b cubed and a minus b cubed are formulas that you should know. Um, so please make sure you write those down. Um, so if what you see on your paper has uh, only two terms, try to use one of these three formulas to factor. Now, for what our purposes, a squared plus b squared is not factorable unless we use i's and then it would be a plus bi and a minus bi, but that is the only way that one is factorable. So it's not factorable in the real number sense, but it is factorable if you use i's. Okay. Now the second, uh, so the first step was remove any common factors. Second step, does it have two terms? If it does, try one of those formulas that I showed you. If it has three terms, then we're going to do the whole strategies for factoring. You know, you can do your slide and divide, guess and check, you know, those different uh, things. We're trying to look for a number um, that related to A and C, two numbers related to A and C that add up to the middle term. And so that's uh, a strategy we're going to talk about. If it has more than three, three um, terms, there might be a strategy called grouping, and we will talk about that. And then step five, they said final check. What you have in your final problem, you should always check, hey, can I factor it one more time? So just um, those are some of the techniques. Look at that front page. It can be helpful as far as some of the things you can look at. Um, here are some examples of factoring. They've kind of gone through and gone through different steps. So if you want to look at that. Um, but we're going to jump in and jump to um, this page. And like I said, we're going to kind of uh, jump around and look at uh, a few of these. So if you want to uh, do this with us, that would be a good idea. So let's start with problem number one. Now the first thing you do anytime you go to do a factoring problem 
is you want to remove any greatest common factor. So the first thing we notice is that 12 and 3 does have a common factor. Can somebody tell me what the common factor is of 12 and 3? A number that will both divide into 12 and also into 3? Laura, you got it. That's 3. So we can take out a 3. Now, the next thing we look for is uh, the A's and B's. Do, does both terms contain an A? Yes or no? Do both terms contain an A? What do you think? Yes, both con terms contain an A. Now, the one that you can remove is the lowest power. So our lowest power is an A to the first. How about B's? Do both terms contain B's? Do both terms contain B's? Yes, they do. So we can take out a B also. Now, it's a division process. So for the numbers, just divide. When we divide out the A and the B, we're actually removing one A and one B from each. So the powers go down by one. And so what we're left with is 4AB minus 1. Now you have to have this one here as a placeholder because this is technically a form of dividing it into two factors. And so the way that we would check it is through multiplication. So if we distributed it back in and that one wasn't there, we would not, you know, it wouldn't factor correctly, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're doing a, a process like this. Now on that um, hints paper, this paper right here, they mentioned in step uh, five that you should look to see if any pieces are factorable further. So you want to look, is 4AB minus 1 factored any further? And it is not, so you're done. Um, now I would like to take a look at number three. Number three is the difference of perfect squares. So remember the formula is a squared minus b squared becomes a minus b times a plus b. Okay? So you'll notice that both of these are even powers, which implies that they're perfect squares, and there's a minus between them. And the number 16 is a perfect square. So we can factor that using this idea. And basically, you're just taking the square root. And so it's going to be x minus 4y and x plus 4y. And again, any of these you can check. If you were to remultiply and redistribute, you better get what you started with or something is wrong. Okay? Anybody have any questions about 1 or 3? Now I would like to do number four with you. Number four is a, an example of a um, what we call grouping problem. Now the reason I think it's a grouping problem is if you count the terms, we've got one, two, three, four terms. Now there's no greatest common factor. There's, you know, like these two both have an X and these two both have a Y, but those aren't greatest common factors throughout, throughout the entire problem. Um, so uh, we can't take out a greatest common factor, but that's something you should always look at. Now what grouping does is it groups the first two terms together and the last two terms together, and we only focus it two at a time, and we remove the greatest common factor for those pieces. Now let me show you what I mean. If we look at the first two pieces, so I'm just focusing on these two right here, they both contain an x. So I am going to remove an x just from those two, and I'm going to be left with an x minus 4. Okay. Now we're going to focus on these back two, and we're going to take out any greatest common factor for the back two. Well, the back two are both divisible by 2, and both contain a y. And then if I take out a 2y for both of those, I'm going to be left with x minus 4. Now, you know that grouping went well if 
these two parentheses match because you have found a hidden greatest common factor. So now we can take that x minus 4 and set it in the front, and then what's left is going to be the x plus 2y that um, we see hanging out next to each of them. Now, you want to check to see if you're done. You're going to be done if this piece and this piece cannot reduce any further, and they cannot, so that is an example of grouping. Um, does anybody have any questions about 3 or 4? Okay, now I would like to jump to, oh, let's go, oh, let's try number six. Let's try number six. Um, number six, I'm going to try the technique of slide and divide. So I'm going to take the nine, I'm going to slide it over, I'm going to write this. as x squared minus 12 plus 36. I'm going to break it down um, using just the fact that I want the factors of 36 that will make 12. That's going to be 6 and 6. And then I am going to divide by 9. Now, um, at this point, some people on um, the get ready for the chapter we're a little bit stuck as to, okay, where do I go next? What you want to do is you want to take and reduce this fraction as much as possible. So they're both divisible by 3. And any remaining fractions, the 3 down here on the bottom, whatever your denominator is after you reduce it, goes on your x. So our final answer is going to be 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. And you can check that it's right. It should be right if you FOIL it out and you get um, this 9x squared minus 12x plus 4, which we do get, okay? Anybody have any questions about number 6? Okay, so we're going to do two more. Um, and then the rest are for you to, to do. This is not due until Thursday at midnight, so you do have a little bit of time to be working on this, okay? Um, but let's take a look at, uh, let's do 8 and 9, and then we'll go from there. For problem number 8, normally I would say, hey, don't worry about it. It's not factorable because it's the sum of squares. But what I would like you to do instead is practice factoring it with i's. So the formula for number 8, if it's a squared plus b squared, it's going to be factored to be a plus bi and a minus bi. Okay? Um, and so in this particular case, that's going to be uh, x plus the square root of 49, which is 7, tack on an i, and x minus 7i. Okay? Anybody have any questions about number 8? Okay, let's do number 9. Now, the first thing you should check is the fact that they have common factors. They all are divisible by x, so let's remove an x. Now, at this point, we want to check to see if this is factorable. Just because I know it's not, it's not. But what we want to do, though, is practice what do we do when we have a piece that we're unsure of about factoring? Well, to that piece, over here on the side, I'm going to do the quadratic formula. Okay? 
So my A value is 16. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see. My B value is 16. And my C value is 3. Okay? So let's do the um, quadratic formula on that piece. That's going to tell us if it's factorable in the traditional sense or if it's factorable using maybe um, uh, it might need, have some i's or square roots in there. Okay, so it's going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 256, minus 4 times a, which is 16, times c, which is 3, is mi minus 192. That's a 256. And all over 2a's, which is 32, which is negative 16 plus or minus. Okay, so 256 minus 192 is 64. Oh, this isn't so bad. Maybe this does factor after all. And then 32 is. Da, 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 da. Uh, well, I'll just leave that for now. And then 64. The square root of 64 is 8. So that's negative 16 plus or minus 8 over 32. And so negative 16 plus 8 is negative 8 over 32. So negative 8 over 32 is negative 1 4. And then the next one is 16, negative 16 minus 8, which is negative 24 over 32. What does that reduce down to? 20, negative 24 over 32 reduces to negative 3 fourths. So it did factor. I'm so sorry. I lied to you. I really assumed it didn't factor. But this is why I found the factors. So the factors were 1 fourth and 3 fourths, and these would both be pluses because it would be the subtraction of the zeros. So it must factor to be 4x plus 1 and 4x plus 3, does it? I'm so sorry. Uh, let's see. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 plus uh, times 4 is 4. 12 plus 4 is 16. It does factor. I'm so sorry. That, that <laughs> This is our final answer. So I guess if you don't find the factors... Um, traditionally, the quadratic formula will always reveal the factors. So my zeros were negative one-fourth and negative three-fourths. And remember, it's always the subtraction of the zeros, and that's how I found the factorization. Kind of a weird one. Sorry, I didn't <laughs> mean to do that. Um, there are a few on here that are prime. Just so you know, there's a few on here that are prime that... Uh, or, you know, you might be able to take out a greatest common factor and then go from there, okay? Um, let's, let me pick out one more. Let's see. Let's do number 14. So for 14, I notice that there is a greatest common factor. They're all divisible by 3 and by x. So we're going to take that out of everything. So you're just dividing it out. And when we take out a 3x from everything, we are left with x squared plus 3x minus 4 in the parentheses. Now this is an example where this will factor one more time. This is going to be x plus 4 and x minus 1. Okay. Um, does it anybody have any questions about the factoring review worksheet? Okay, so there are some examples of that.